morning and welcome to all of you this morning city life church it's great to connect with you uh today we were meant to be celebrating our 100 years 100 years in baffins 380 years in port so there's an amazing story of a group of guys that met together in a cottage in old ports of were praying seeking god they outgrew the cottage, they built a church uh, in the garden, and uh, we've moved around location five times, operated on about seven different names, and uh, here we are today. We were meant to be celebrating that amazing heritage and history, but because of the situation that we are in, that has not happened. But what I wanted to do is I did want to bring one of the previous pastors uh, to be with us today, just to share some of his thoughts and reflections uh, on the season. So, a good morning to Freddie Brooks. Welcome to you. Good morning. It's great to be with you. I wish I could be with you in person, but uh, this is the next best thing. Definitely. Now, Freddie, uh, for those of you who don't know, Freddie was my pastor when I came on board uh, here at City Life Church, which was then previously known as Tangiero Baptist Church. And so for those of you who may be a bit miffed about me being the pastor, you can blame Freddie. He was the one who brought me on board. Freddie, um, of course, you, you've been back and forwards visiting the church um, through the years. And it's been great that we've kept in contact and, you know, we're regularly in touch and on social media and phone calls and Zoom calls. Um, and you've obviously been to some of our conferences. I know that you watched our service uh, uh, even, you know, this Sunday. Do you want to share a little bit about, you know, because quite often, you know, with my children, I see them every day. And so you don't always get to see the growth, the development, the change. But you, you know, when, when you've not seen a child for a while and then you see them again, the, the changes are more obvious. Do you want to yeah. share a little bit about some of the changes uh, that you've seen in CLC over the years um, that you've yeah. been staying in contact with us. Yeah, sure, sure. Just to say that uh, what was Tangiro Baptist Church was a massive mouthful. Uh, it was my second church and uh, it was a privilege to be uh, in Portsmouth and catch the Portsmouth culture. And, uh, and that's how we met, as you said in the introduction. Uh, but I want to say this before I say anything about the changes. Uh, in, uh, Portsmouth was my second church as a Baptist minister. Um, and you're the church that makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> because when I look, at, I look where you are now and where you've traveled, and I think, you know what? I had a bit of hand in that. It was where you are now has got absolutely nothing to do with me. I would wish it had. I wish I could claim that fame. But it was such a privilege to be able to sow some seeds and vision and, and leave those behind. And you come along and, and build on that. And I remember conversations we had when you said, I'm I feel God's calling me to take on that mantle and we you moved on from there and then I came back and and it as you say it's like watching somebody else's children grow and I've come back and with my wife Jane as well and not only the decor of the place the way you done it out and the but everything the atmosphere is so awesome I think wow you know, I think it was the, the last conference that came to. And then I saw you on the platform and I thought, gosh, I remember when he was a youth pastor. And, and look, look at the congregation. This is what I would have loved to have seen happening. But it was like a dream. And you've taken the dream and making the dream a reality. Now, some people haven't got that gift. They could make dreams become a nightmare. <laughs> but you have done that. And, and I, every time I zoom back in and when zooming back in on Sunday, seeing your, uh, how the camera angles and all that, awesome. I brag about you everywhere I go. I say, this church just took uh, a little snippet of 
a, a mantle that are left behind and have built on it. Other churches I've pastored haven't done that. And I have to learn how to let that go. But the ones like yourselves that have, I just say, thank you, God. And I really do. And my wife as well. We thank God for you, for what you're doing. And even in the midst of this awful time that we're in now, it's lockdown, seeing how God had prepared you for it, even though you didn't, like everybody else, didn't know it was coming, but he prepared you and he's, uh, you're ready with the live streaming and awesome. And I just say thank God for you guys. Well, thank you. That's very kind words. And it's really nice to know that you, you still have that real affection in your heart for the church. And uh, we, you know, we're really, we're really grateful, really thankful to you and Jane and, and the courage that you had, you know, leading the church, you know, and making some, some challenging uh, decisions. I know it wasn't always an easy time, but definitely, you know, you helped to bring in a, a, a good foundation and a strong kingdom culture and um, we really appreciate that and recognize that it's all uh, an important part of the jigsaw puzzle that God yeah. was bringing together and um, to, to, to give a picture of Christ, which is ultimately that, you know, uh, what the church wants to, to do. And so thank you so much for being with us today. And it's really encouraging just to, to see your face and to, to hear from you. Now, how are you and Jane finding this season? I know it's been very different, and, and obviously you were pastoring uh, New Hope in Eastbourne uh, yeah. for a while, and then you you know laid the uh, passed the baton on, and so now you're kind of more itinerant in in ministry. You run a ministry called Rivers Ministry. I know you're doing a lot of stuff online, which is really great to see those videos and those pearls of wisdom that you're sharing. Do you want to share uh, a little bit about how life has been for you in this season and, and maybe a little bit about what God's teaching you, what he's showing you? Okay. Uh, well, for, for both of us, because of the lockdown, I mean, we stood down at the end of September. Uh, I took out a prearranged month of sabbatical just so that I didn't come out of, local pastoral ministry and then zoom straight into itinerant but the dreams and they're still there was to go abroad once a year at least to travel as many cities in this land as possible and to do conferences and do all that sort of thing uh, so we then started we kept away from our previous church and we we started to visit different churches, people we've got a relationship with in the town, and um, with a view that maybe we will go back to New Hope at some point, and that still may happen. And then lockdown came. And it, uh, for everybody, it was bang. So we're not connected to anything. So uh, if anybody's watching this and they're feeling isolated, well, we really did feel isolated in that time because we had we, we had no sort of real connection and I would encourage people just connect if you've been watching stre the streaming going on at City Life just get connected as best you can because we we're better together and we need one another and so we felt a bit lost if we're honest I mean there was going to be an adjustment from 24 years of being the leading guy to okay what do I do now I knew what I was doing but suddenly everything changed so there was that adjustment but the lockdown and the, all the hideousness and then being isolated like everybody else but out of that we've learned and we to grow and to go deeper with God and a friend of ours who's a intercessor that so people have got to learn to feed themselves. And I think that's, that's what we've done and we've turned it into a positive rather than a negative and say, well, okay, we've got more time to do X, Y, Z. So we'll use that time wisely and find out what we like to do. So it's like everybody else, it's been a dichotomy of great 
and then awful and those mixture of feelings but the, the presence of god is so real isn't it and he he just comes to us and he's along the way just showing us the way forward we've started a prayer group in the village where we are uh, not to start a church but just praying for taking um responsibility for uh the real estate where we are the turf and if we don't pray who's going to pray so we've started to pray with another couple and then the lockdown came then we did zoom prayer meetings and now we've started praying in gardens and using the initiative and to pray god's kingdom come here and now in west ham heavensy village where we live so that's the kind of stuff we've been doing that's great really encouraging just to hear how you're being proactive and thinking inside the box and outside the box and, yeah yeah uh, you know just pressing pressing into prayer which is so so important in this season isn't it yes. well i know that you and i had a little bit of a conversation before um about you know i asked you the question and you know <laughs> I, I very much believe that in the, the the proverb that says in the multitude of counsel there is success Yes. And so, you know, I, I rang you up and asked you, what, if you were in my situation, if you were a pastor of CLC, what would you do? Because the reality is there's so many different um, responses of churches from all around the world. I do think it, every church is unique and, and different. And, and, and individually, we need to be saying, what's Holy Spirit saying to us uniquely? Because it's not a one size fits all. It's a, not a cookie cutter approach. It's not, it's not put Saul's armor on everyone, every, every situation as a different context, circumstance, mm. you know, group of people, community. But, but, you know, I asked you that question cause I, I, that would have, you know, the, I knew the answer would be helpful to me as I was processing kind of what it was that God wanted me uh, and us, you know, as a church family to do. And obviously we announced on Sunday night, we spoke with our E3 leaders about it on Sunday afternoon. We announced on Sunday night at the six o'clock service about our three phase plan uh, mm. coming back into the building, which the key word there is, you know, that it must be flexible. It could change at any moment because we don't know yeah. what's around the corner. We know our hope and trust is in God. But Freddie, do you want to share about, yeah, what, what would you do if you were still pastoring a church right now? What would you be doing uh, now in this season? You mean apart from being tempted to take on another job or something? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I know there's a lot of pastors, leaders, business leaders, governmental leaders, all the different spheres that are kind of thinking, do I want to do this? Because it's, <laughs> it's not a normal time, is it? Well, I have to say, I mean, uh, I would, uh, I think of uh, uh, last church and they, they're doing the best they can with the technology they've got. Uh, and it's a bit difficult sometimes because I'm sitting on my hands thinking, and occasionally I'm in contact with one or two and I say, well, you could do, you know, sort of leading the 360 degree leader type thing from the sides of it, you know, without interfering. And, but I have to say, particularly in the early days of this um, modern day plague that we're wa walking through, uh, I first of all want to say, I take my hat off to you guys. Uh, I've, I've, we've zoomed into a lot of churches and some churches like you are really streets ahead and they're doing things well. Some people are, some churches are, haven't, but to be able to keep the family together and to, to care, to show people you care for them, but you can't be in touch with, in contact with them in the physical sense. And uh, I'm, we, well, we, we pray a lot. We pray a lot for you guys, you and Laura, the team there. We pray for many of the church leaders that we know. And I think to myself, and I said to Jane, there are sometimes I wake up and I think, oh, I wish I was back in pastoral ministry because I would go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and then I think, sometimes I wake up and I think, thank God, somebody else has got all the problems. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what would I do? I think my, what I'd be doing now is I'd be uh, going with caution. I, I watched your message, as I said, 
and I would definitely be in the consecration place of just saying, okay. You see, I believe God has got so many great things. People of my generation, your parents' generation, and beyond, have been praying for years and years for revival in this country, or well, global revival, end-time revival, some people call it. And I can't help feel that this is part of that somehow. The pain comes before the, the breakthrough. And we, your message was so on message to say, look, we're going to cross over, but make sure we've got everything in place. So I'd be saying to the church, I'd be saying, look, okay, we are going to get there. This will lift. But what, what does God want us to gain in this time? Have we got it yet? I said, sometimes I wake up in the morning, you know, I wish I was doing it. Sometimes I'm glad I'm not. But sometimes I wake up in the morning, I think, oh, for goodness sake, not another government restriction. Oh, and I just like, like I, so many other leaders and church members and so pulling your hair out and, and frustration. And there are sometimes I wake up and I'm, I'm looking at the scriptures and I'm letting God take me into a deeper place in this, in this place of consecration. And I'm saying, actually, we don't want to come out of this yet. Because I was thinking about this this morning, thinking about our conversation, thinking about the conversation we would have. Uh, it says the latter house will be greater than the former house. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Well, the, for, the former house in the Christian concept was that Peter's shadow went over the sick and they were raised up. If God's going to break through, which I want to see, and you do, uh, these signs of wonders and miracles and revival, we, we are the revival carriers. So I'd be saying, let's, let's spend some time in this consecration mm. level of gaining as much as we can, as long as we can, and don't be in a hurry. You see, people uh, misinterpret urgency with hurry. The two are not the same. Mm. Uh, there is an urgency, of course. But God's not in a hurry. You follow the life of Jesus. He's 12 years old. He's given all the answers. But he's got another 17 odd years before he actually can step into that arena. God's never in a hurry, but there's always an urgency. So I'd be saying to the church, don't be in a hurry, but feel that God's heart. The urgency is to get us right. Yeah, so good. That's, that's the kind of thing I'd be saying to the church. Uh, don't let, we mustn't be driven by frustration, but by passion mm. and desire for God and his glory. And what are we being, I'd ask to say, what are we driving for? Are we driving for to come back to church and have the same old, same old, looking at the hairs of the back of the head of somebody else? sitting there or do we want to see a church that's explosive with every member ministry that planting out and planting out and planting out i think i know the answer to that question yeah that's great love that freddie really powerful uh, reflections that really resonate so you have some things that god has put on your heart and um for for this season and for the people uh, of city life and we know that there's not just people from city life church watching this broadcast we've got people from other ministries churches uh people that you know would consider themselves believers seekers doubters and so do you want to share some of the words that god's put on your heart with us freddie okay yeah i mean the the big issue in all of this is about knowing God. And you, we've heard some of the reports of the digital alpha course that's been going on. And uh, Nicky Gumbel had said that he didn't want really to do this. But more people have come to faith <laughs> in this, through this digital uh, alpha course style i mean i've not partook of one i'd like to to see how it kind of works but but 
it, the, the key is knowing God. When I go out and about and I see people in their masks and I try and, I try and encourage people, I try and um, I, I joke with people, I say, I'll say to the people on the cash desk, I'll say, I am smiling under this mask. And actually, I was at this one particular place the other day, and uh, I said to the lady, just seeking just to break through and engage and bring encouragement where else. And I said, I am smiling on this mask. And she said, I know you are. I can see it in your eyes. And uh, anyway, I, I think the key is knowing God uh, and, and making him known. Daniel 11.32 is a, a favorite verse and often we trump it out as it were and it says the people who know their God shall do great exploits basically the New King James says. The English Standard Version which I like it says that they shall take action. They should be strong and take action. So what's the action we need to be taking in this time well, those of us, uh, those people who are watching that, you know the Lord. Maybe you can point to a day when Jesus came into your life and maybe you can chart that back somehow. Maybe with some, it'll be a gradual change. Maybe, as you said, there are some people that are the doubters. They're not sure. They're asking questions. The most important thing we do in this life is not understand what the pandemic is all about. It's not Try and understand why stuff's happening all around us. It's knowing God. My, I would have to say, I'll address you right now. Do you know him? And those who do know him, do you want to know him better? You see, when we know him better, we know how best to handle the situation we're in. Paul was in an isolated situation in the book of Philippines. And I know many of my colleagues I've spoken on the book of Philippians. You may have done in your church. But he's, he's in prison. He's in jail. He's in isolation. He can't connect with anybody and there's no internet. And he said the thing in chapter 1 and verse 12, I think, and he says, the things that have happened to me have served to advance the gospel. So I want to say, know God and go deeper with him uh, and we will know what to do through this season and when we come out of the season. When we're in this season, I don't know about you, but you're out and about and you look, it looks like some sort of futuristic world. It looks like something uh, that you wouldn't have imagined this 12 months ago. People walking around in masks and all this way of doing life and you think, is this the end? Is this the end of the world? Well, I want to be in a place where I'm prepared as if it is. I don't believe it is. But we need to be prepared. If Jesus comes back today, we need to be prepared. We need to know him and we need to be in a good place with him. Um, but in that, okay, I'm prepared as if he's coming. But in that time, I'm planning. I'm planning what's, what, what's, what's Rivers Ministry going to look like when, when everything lifts? Well, I'll tell you what, it, what, what I've done. I've planned. One of the places where the lady said, I can see you smiling, was at the post office because I renewed my passport that had run out in faith. Because I'm planning that next year I'm going. I'm going to take the gospel somewhere, out, of, out to another land somewhere. So we plan. In this time, we plan. And we also often write it down there. In that planning, we're also pursuing God. So I'm not just sort of getting lots of information. I want to have the transformation. So in this time, we need to ask the big questions, what I call the big questions. What are you doing? What do you want to do with my life? Who am I? What, what, what do you, what's my particular job? 
Um, who are you if you're a seeker? Who are you, God? One of the booklets I use is Try Praying. And it's full of little stories like that. Uh, it's from Hope Mission. And, and you just leave it in somebody's hands. And the people just start praying to this God that they've never seen. Who are you? And he shows up. So those are the big questions. And we need to address them. The second thing is, ask God. I'm not, this is what I'm doing. I'm not saying this is what you should do, but I'm okay. This is what I'm doing. Join me, if you will. That's Show me how to go deeper. Deeper in the word. Deeper in the things of the spirit. Deeper in intimacy with God. You see, about knowing God, Paul writes, as he says, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, Ephesians 1:17. Um, that we might know him. I love this, what the passion says, to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. So this is a golden opportunity, friends, to go deeper, get more intimate with God. So we, we're prepared as if he comes back today. We're prepared as if, okay, the next time we meet, we're going to meet in the air and all of those things. Wonderful. But we're planning and we're pursuing. We're going deeper. So is that it? No, it's not it. We then... Look for ways how we can serve. And this is what I would be saying to my congregation. Well, you are my congregation at the moment. Hmm. Look for ways to serve. I love the way you put on your notice thing outside that we're here to serve you. And look for ways to, with food bank, to look for ways to help people get through this way. The, the, we are sons and servants. Sons first, so we inherit. And when I say sons, now ladies, when I say sons, I'm saying a son because an eldest son was entitled to the inheritance. So a lady is a son because you're entitled to the whole inheritance of what God said. We are partakers and participators of the divine nature so we are sons and daughters of the living god but we are servants and we serve one another we serve the body of christ and we serve the community so these are some of the thoughts that uh, god's put on my heart just to share with you today through this broadcast that you're doing Brilliant. Thank you so much, Freddie, for, for bringing those words. And I know that in our pre-conversation, you were sharing a little bit about, um, you know, a, a previous tough time. I think it was during the third century, uh, during the Roman Empire time. Did you want to just share a little bit about what happened? Because at that time, people were saying, it's the end of the world. Yeah, we're not yeah. going to come through this. But how did the Christians respond those that followed christ like how did they seize the opportunities that were there in a time of crisis and great uncertainty yeah well they were in a time of plague and people were dying uh by the minute almost and uh, the the death rate was really high and particularly in rome and i think it was about the third century um, and the Christians got blamed, hey-ho. <laughs> uh, but the Christians, instead of complaining about the blame, they served. And there was, at that time, and probably among the Christians in particular, thought this must be the end of the world. People are dying off. Jesus said in the last days there'll be plagues and all of these things taking place. This must be it, friends. But what they did, they didn't just go, okay, we'll just wait to die and go to be with the Lord or wait for him to come back. They, they served the community around them and particularly the pagans 
who were persecuting them and blaming them. Out of that, they came out of the plague and the church grew beyond measure. Wow. There is such a metaphor in that historic event that, that, that brings us into a parallel of what's happening now. Oh man, we're coming out of this so strong, so mighty. I was, you know, I said about the shadow of Peter. Uh, yeah, I want a shadow ministry. Mm. You know, I want a kind of shadowy, not shady. I said shadow. <laughs> yeah, so that that's what happened in I think, as I say, the third century. That uh, they they just pressed in, and this is what we do. And this is what we see with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, don't we? They, they, they said, we're not going to bow the knee. We're not going to bow the knee to all this fear and all pressure to go back. Yeah. We will serve the Lord and he will deliver us. But you know what? Even if he doesn't, even if we're not coming out of it, we're not going to bow the knee. And we know there was a fourth one in that fiery furnace. And the fourth one is with us in this furnace and we'll come out of it and they were promoted i did a message on that one you know they had the persecution and when they went through the persecution they came out promoted Brilliant. and the church is going to be promoted onto a global level i uh, i really believe that we just got to prepare amen amen and you know those of you that are in the chat rooms just type in amen i agree we're coming through we're gonna be promoted hang on let, let's go i just let faith let's arise in the heart <laughs> and let's declare these things out that we're we're gonna be promoted we're crossing over to the other side and we have consecrated ourselves in preparation for that freddie some really powerful stuff that you've shared thank you so much for for bringing the word today um, do you want to just share for anyone who has never received Christ, never made Jesus the Lord of their life, they've never said, you know, God, you're in the number one seat in my life. I don't want to do it on my own way anymore. I want to give you my life. Yeah. But those that may want to pray and make that commitment of faith, take that step of faith today. Would you lead us in a prayer? And I'm also aware that there's probably going to be people watching who may be have made a commitment of faith in the past but are not where they should be in their walk with god and want to yeah. you know reconnect rededicate and they're like would you lead us in a prayer right now that we can wherever you're at you know listening to this message you can pray along with freddie from your heart like you mean it and you can know that you have become a christian that you are a new creation yeah I will. Just before I do, I just want to say to uh, one particular person or maybe more that you might be saying, well, uh, how do I know? And I, what I always say is that you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. You see, if we believers are all deluded and wrong, then when we die, we've, we've lost nothing. We just had a very optimistic life. But if we are right and you die without Christ, you lose everything. Is it really worth taking that risk? So I'm, I'm calling you from that fence that actually doesn't exist and to say, Jesus, come into my life. So let's pray that. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe that you died for me on the cross. And I believe that you're risen from the dead. I just ask you now, please forgive me for all my rebellious ways. Let's pause there, think about them, maybe write them down, maybe make a mental note of them. Ask him for those areas, those sins. And the moment, the moment we do, he forgives. So thank you, Jesus, that you forgive us and you cleanse us. And so I receive you now, Lord Jesus. I receive my forgiveness. I receive my new status as being a child of God. And I ask you to come and be the center of my life to live for you. 
for the rest of my days. Help me to be filled with your spirit and walk with you. Help me to go deeper. Help me to serve and live for you in Jesus' name. And for those that are maybe not in a good place, dear friends, this is not the best time to be in a bad place with God. Stuff is happening all around us. I'm calling you home. Do you know what? My father is the prodigal loving God. He loves you so much. And he's, he's running towards you right now. Turn back to him. Stop feeding on those, uh, that pig pen food and turn to him. So I pray, Father God, help me to turn back to you, to turn away from everything that's destructive, that is not good, that is not wholesome. And I turn to you and I lay it all down at the cross. And I thank you that you received me as your uh, son and daughter and bring me into that place of status of walking with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer at home or wherever you are, please get in touch with us. We would love to connect with you to encourage you uh, in your journey of faith. Freddie, thanks so much for being on the broadcast today. It's been an honor, a pleasure. Do send our love to Jane uh, as well. And uh, if people want to get in touch with you, if they want to connect with you online, I know that you put reflections on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, how would people best um, connect with you, Freddie? Uh, they can connect with me on my Facebook page, just Freddie Brooks. Uh, just search out Freddie Brooks, spelled with an E, S, the Brooks, and uh, Freddie with the I-E. Or you can get me on YouTube. Uh, it's Rivers Ministries. And if you start, typing in Rivers Ministries, you should find me. And I've also got a Facebook page called Rivers. You should find me, Rivers Ministries, you should find me there. I would love to be more technical and have some easy ways for you to get to me. But you know what? If God wants you to connect with me, we're going to connect. Brilliant. That's great. Well, God bless you, Freddie, and enjoy the rest of your day. And you. Bless you.